When it comes to some of the bizarre military operations in human history, the Japanese military's use of balloons to bombard the United States during World War II is definitely one of them. In terms of the results, it was a complete failure. A total of about 9,300 balloons were launched, but only about 300 reached the target area, causing minimal damage. However, to dismiss balloon bombs as useless would be naive. In fact, there was another balloon bomb operation that took place earlier, known as the Outward Operation in the UK. Initially, the British did not intend to develop balloons into an offensive weapon. In the early stages of World War II, balloons were mainly used for meteorological observation and air defense. For example, many balloons were tethered around important targets such as cities and military bases, forcing enemy bombers to reduce speed or climb to avoid the balloons and their cables, thus creating conditions for striking targets and reducing bombing losses. The idea for using balloons as bombs was sparked by an accident. At that time, Sweden was not involved in World War II. One day in 1940, the Swedish people were listening to a broadcast when it suddenly cut off. After investigation, it was discovered that a British anti-aircraft balloon had accidentally been blown over a thousand kilometers by the wind and then collided with the main national broadcasting station's antenna. Several similar incidents occurred after that, with the difference being that the victims changed from antennas to power lines. With such incidents occurring, the Swedish government certainly had to negotiate with the British government for a solution. Who could tolerate such frequent accidents? However, the British saw an opportunity in these accidents. They never expected that simple balloons could cause such great destruction, so they began planning the outward operation. This operation was carefully considered. First, various accidents had already demonstrated the destructive power of balloons. Then, from a meteorological perspective, the UK's position was unique, with winds mostly blowing from west to east, making it favorable for the UK to launch attacks, while the Germans in the east were unable to retaliate in the same manner. The British used the Navy's stockpile of meteorological balloons for this operation, totaling tens of thousands. These balloons were small, with a diameter of only a little over 2 meters when fully inflated, and could reach altitudes of several thousand meters. The balloons were equipped with fuses serving different purposes, which were timed to ignite through slow burning. The specific length of the burning rope was determined based on wind speed and the distance to the target. After being released, the balloons would climb to about 5,000 meters in altitude and then drift towards Germany, where, after a certain time, the burning rope would ignite the venting device, causing the balloon's hydrogen to slowly leak and reduce their altitude. After descending near the ground, they could then cause damage. The damage was mainly done in two ways. About half of the balloons were equipped with conductive cables that would snag onto high-voltage power lines during low-altitude flight, causing a short circuit. Severe short circuits could cause the cables to overheat and melt, or even damage transformers and circuit breakers. Even if the lines did not break, the damaged wires might fail under load in the future, leading to accidents. Replacing these power lines was not only time-consuming and labor-intensive, but also affected industrial production and the normal operation of residents' lives. Other balloons were suspended with more direct destructive weapons, such as bombs filled with white phosphorus that would explode and burn upon landing, or incendiary bombs that would spray flames around 6 meters after detonation, causing fires. The first balloon bomb launch occurred in March 1942, more than two years before the Japanese balloon bomb campaign, and the operation was fully stopped in September 1944 as by then Allied bomber units were able to bomb German territory at ease. Evaluating the effectiveness of the operation was difficult, but British intelligence confirmed that the action caused numerous fires and other effects, leading the British to deem the operation a success for disrupting German industrial production. Once again, innocent Sweden suffered as some balloons drifted to the country and caused damage, and a few balloons returned to the UK due to changes in wind direction. The Germans were clearly at a disadvantage in dealing with these balloon saboteurs. 
They initially used fighter planes to shoot down the balloons, but as the number of balloons increased, they gave up due to the high cost of operations. At the peak, the British were releasing up to 1,500 balloons per day, with a total of 99,142 being launched. The Germans had to deploy a large number of personnel to observe the sky, watch for fires, and provide timely remedies. The cost incurred by both sides in this game was clearly unequal, so it can be determined that the outward operation was a complete success.